All right. Hey guys, we'll wait a minute or two. Let people come in. Today, we started working on this earlier in the week. But I had a lot of stuff to do this week. I had carrots to plant, the garden and stuff to do. So, so we're going to um, put the trees in today. And then we'll let that dry. And then we'll come back and do some more. It'll take it till tomorrow to dry. I just cleaned my table off, too, so everything's in the wrong place. All right. So in order to uh, hey guys, hey Salpy. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're we're off a of lockdown here, pretty much. We still got some stuff going on, but not too much. All right, so we're just going to take some of this liquid clear medium and go ahead and oil this back down. Oil this canvas down again. Now I could just oil down the parts of the canvas that uh, I'm going to be painting on because I'm not going to be painting them, but except some trees and branches and stuff like that. But I have found that if you if you do that, that it leaves uh, this liquid clear leaves a layer of paint on there. So you know you kind of get some flat spots and some shiny spots and you know, I like that. So I just do the whole canvas and then I can just don't have to worry about it. Make sure you get the light on everything. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, now we're going to wipe some of that back. <laughs> hey, Jeff. So today, really, we're just going to cover, continue to finish this underpainting. And then it'll be plenty dry tomorrow. We'll be able to start glazing this over. Now some of the trees, I just sketched the trees in. So since I was sketching it, you know, I put the I put the trees, I sketched the trees in too. To kind of show me where, you know, I had to erase the buildings when I was done. So, you know, we'll go from there. So we'll just be using burnt umber today. And adding to the underpainting that we already that we already did, and then tomorrow we'll we'll glaze this girl up. We might be able to finish it tomorrow. We might not. I don't know. We'll see. Hey, Colin. Hey, Leah. I was, I saw your uh, cat place is open again. Is that right? I think it is. All right. So we're gonna kind of. Take it easy on this arm. I got a bad arm. So now you can see from these shadows that um, the light's over on that side. So you know, we have shadows on this side of the tree. I'm going to do finish some of this with a with a um, script liner. We'll get the rough. We'll get the rough part of this in to start with. And of course, we're just using you know a slight bit of paint here, not a lot of paint at all. It's just sliding over that liquid clear. Okay. Yeah, that looks okay. That tells me where that one goes. Let's put. Well, let's see. Let's go ahead and put this other branch in. So how all are you guys doing today? It's it's kind of sunny right now, but it's supposed to be thunderstorming in the next hour or so. So I guess we'll see. You never can tell the weatherman around this place. I'll tell you what they're level to. How accurate they are is legend. Anthony! Hey, we're just continuing on with this painting we started the other day. We're just kind of getting the trees and stuff in today.
all sorts. All this is going to be glaze when it's over again. So mostly just getting the underpainting in here. Got one interest, really interesting challenge here in that uh, I have a branch that comes toward me and down around the building. So I'm going to have to, um, I, haven't, I haven't ever done one of those so that way. So that's why I hit it because I wanted to try how to do it. So. And we're just laying this in with a filler. We'll, we'll add some script liner work to it, to it here in a minute. All right, and I got one more branch that runs behind that one. Comes this way. Anthony, how you doing? Have you guys started? Have you guys started lock, unlocking in your state at all? I know New York's pretty was well, pretty locked down. Two more trees and then we'll start working some script liner so let's just so now this tree sitting behind that tree so we're going to paint this tree in first and we'll just go ahead and paint it in there so we know that it's back there and then we'll just paint over that that'll give it a better cohesiveness i think If you guys have any questions about this technique, just put them up there and I'll be glad to answer them. Just using burnt umber. The technique is called Brunei. B-R-N-U-B-R-U-N-E-I. places to add branches and stuff later mm -hmm. and of course you know we don't have to do all the branches in the underpainting if we don't want let me give it a root structure here you can see how slick the canvas is this paint's just flowing right on onto it that far with my arm yet. Let's try this. We'll just paint it with the right hand. Which for me is actually the wrong hand, but it's okay. So we got another painting we're gonna work on today. Um, we'll probably drop this video and pick up another one before we start that, but we're gonna want this part of the tree to be just a little wider than it is. As I look at it, you know that's better. Alright. Of course there'll be leaves and all that stuff. And I could put those in, but I don't think I will, probably at this stage. Alright, now I got this other guy that's kind of running. And I've got one. I'm just kind of sketching these in with this brush and then I'll I'll illustrate them more with a script liner.
Oh, hi, Kathy. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. United States of America. And Anthony, Grayscale Painting, he's from New York. Long time buddies. Well, it's been four years. Anthony, it's hard to think, hard to realize it's been four years, hasn't it? <laughs> time has gone fast. All right. So I guess I'll work on, I'll work on this branches here first. So this technique, this Brunet technique, um, allows you to kind of, you know, put the, to figure out your darks and lights and how you want this to run, how you want to let it run. Oh yeah, I forgot that I did that right there. So right here, I've got a branch that comes up and around, but I'm, I'm leaving a spot right there in the roof. So we'll have to pull a little bit of, a little bit of paint back off. That's okay. It's not hard. So for those of you just tuning in, we started this painting a couple days ago and, and we did the first part, which was all the buildings and the bricks and did all that in one sitting. And then we've, we've, now we're coming and that's an underpainting. Then we've oiled this canvas again this morning, another fresh coat of oil on it, and now we're putting in uh, some more underpainting, which is kind of unusual. I don't usually do it that way, but whew, by the time I painted all those houses and all those bricks, I was like, I was tired. My arm was tired, so I decided to take a break. All right, let's go ahead and put some of these other branches in. Any questions you got, just put them up there. This is in oils. This color is burnt umber. And I don't think you can probably see it on the monitor, but there are some penciled in branches that kind of I drew in originally to just kind of. I get, maybe I could recap here in a second. Let me, let me put a couple more branches in here and then let me kind of recap for everybody that, that, that's new as to how we got to this point and what all's what all we got on this canvas. One second. There we go. Alright, so it's a 12 by 16 canvas. It's just a regular Michaels canvas. Nothing fancy, too much fancy about it. Um, originally, it has three coats of white gesso on it. Um, then we put a coat of uh, liquid liquid burnt umber, really. It's kind of what it was, about 50% um, linseed oil and 50% burnt umber. We put the cover the whole canvas and then we wiped it back. Oh, I'm sorry, let me back up. After we put the gesso on, we sketched all the buildings and the trees in and we sprayed it with a fix-it. Um, you can use a fix-it um, or you can, uh, basically it's to hold the pencil marks on there or you can use a hairspray or something like that, it'll work. Um, don't use a really good hairspray though, use something cheap. So, um, then we put, uh, then we uh, stained the canvas with uh, burnt umber and, and linseed oil and then uh, we began taking paint off, back off the canvas, uh, until we ended up with all the buildings showing and all the darks and lights where we wanted them to be. So, for those of you, I guess for you, not, there's not a whole lot of taking off of paint I need to do today, but I guess in order to show you some of that, though, I could I could do some just to show you and then just put it right back on. I'm gonna put these. Uh, you'll see me switching hands painting. I've got a torn rotator cuff in my left arm. And so I can only raise my hand a certain height and then I, and it don't work anymore. So until I till all this other nonsense gets done and uh, I can get in for my surgery, uh, I guess I will be handicapped that way. I'll switch real quick to a filbert to do some of this heavier, broader stuff here. There we go. 
So then this morning we we just oiled the canvas again. We started using um, just use linseed oil to oil the canvas down, and then uh, and then we wiped it back so we don't have make the canvas too slick. Can't make it too slick. It's just if you do, if you make it too slick, the paint will just slide right off of the canvas. So <laughs> all the can all the paint will end up at the bottom of the canvas. So we wiped it back just to have a real thin layer of that. And now we're just adding paint. So um, I was talking about wiping paint back. So for those of you who weren't here the other day, um, let me show you an example of that. So let's put a branch. I don't know. It doesn't matter where. Let's just put a branch right here. Let's put a branch. Let's just put a branch right here. And then I can say, oh, I didn't want that branch. Or I wanted that branch to be a different shape or whatever. You can edit that really easy with a Q-tip. Just take a Q-tip. Voila, you can just erase that right back off. And so that's how we created these, these highlights is by high by taking paint, putting paint on, taking paint off until we got all the darks and lights that we wanted where we wanted them. So now we're just adding these trees this morning so that tomorrow we will be able to start glazing this painting. It, it may take one glaze session, it may take a couple. Depends, I guess, really. Now these darker areas of the tree, as the paint begins to settle in, um, when you start working on the glaze, these branches that are darker will look closer than the branches that are farther back. So, and you can you can actually add tonal values and take away tonal value for that with Q-tip. So, you know, it's a fairly easy thing to do. Yep, it's a it's a tunnel technique called uh, the underpainting is called it's Brene, it's B R U N E I A. There's also a, suddenly I'm having a brain cramp. There's also a, a technique that um, uses um, black and white to do the same thing. Uh, I've also done it with. Um, Payne's Gray. Now Payne's Gray, if you use that instead of, it's not quite the same as, as doing it with black and white because in grays, because um, Payne's Gray's got a blue tint to it. And so, you know, it kind of, let's put that brick. It kind of, uh, it still, it still works pretty cool. I mean, I like the way that it works, but it, it's, it's a lot different than doing it this way. I think you really, it's, it's really nice though for ocean scenes because, uh, you know, the water being blue and the paint's gray being kind of a blue. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. All right. Well, a lot of this will be covered up later, but I'm going to go ahead and I'll know, I'll know it's back there. And the people who live in this house will know that it's back there. All right, let's add a little bit more dark now. Okay. These branches right here. Don't need too far down there. Or people have to duck when they walk in the door, right? I don't have any trouble seeing that apart. 
so at one point I guess I had another let's add another branch like right in here So now, if you want to see what the next step is, I'll be doing a painting this after, uh, as soon as we finish this one, probably. Um, where the underpainting is complete, a different painting, of course, but the painting is completely dry, and we'll be starting the glazing of that. This uh, same technique is, is used a lot in um, most of the people that I knew that, know that do portraits. They do they do these underpaintings for the portraits, and then uh, use a glazing technique over the top of that. It's it's really nice. Let's just put a couple on that one. Alright. We're just about done with this. I can't tell for sure, but it looks like I've got some excess paint there, but I don't think it is. Yeah, just a little bit. I'll just take that back off the building right there. It's already got that shadow the way that I want it. All right, let's add some trees. Not some trees, some grass. Yeah, yeah, it's just, just a, let's do that with a flat. I've got a soft flat here. All right, let's try this one. How about this one? Hmm. All right, we'll put them both over here. We'll try them both. All right, so now we just want to put some just some shadowy grass around here and there. I can build on when I get to the layering part, to the glazing part. Just a little bit here and there. We don't need a lot. Also got a couple of stones over here. Over in this side, the grass is gonna be a little more shadowed. All right, let's finish this up right here. A couple of stepping stones. I'll show you how to kind of adjust this value on these. I'm just kind of putting the paint down. I think we only had a third. I didn't have one in the in the drawing in the sketch, but I think I'll just put another one. There we go. All right. So now I just want to add some tone. So I want a little bit of a highlight on these at the top. So Anthony, you like this store because you know my wife a little bit. So yeah, <laughs> I sent her to the grocery store to get me some Q-tips. She came back. I was like, no, this, those are the wrong kind of Q-tips. Those are, <laughs> they're not this or that. She's like, yeah, right. So, you know, yeah, get no respect here. All right, now we're just going to try to squeeze in a little bit more shadow right down here on the bottom. And add a little bit of texture to these stones. I don't want a lot of shadow because they're not going to be too high off the ground. All right. Get a little 
something, something back there. All right. Let's build some clumpy clumps right here. All right. Okay, let's go back to the trees and finish up this group over here. So for that, we're going to turn this painting upside down because my hand can't reach that eye, so it won't be all that hard. I just did it this way. I did the last, um, I did these branches with a script liner. Let me show you that, but let's do these with an, let's do this with an angle brush. These other ones here. See how that goes. See if we like that. So let's just kind of. That's the back tree, right? So. Kind of covering up a few pencil lines as I go. You don't have to cover them all up in this at this point. I'll come out in your all's way. All right, let's just get a couple little branches. Let's see. Let's add a little bit of dark right in the snake of the tree. All right. All right. Now let's just add a couple things here. A couple things here and there. Yeah. So this this angle brush is working pretty good. I'm just kind of covering up some pencil lines right here. Make them vanish. Let's add a couple shadows right in here. Way too much paint on that brush. Let's try it again. Here we go. You know, even if you paint this, just put however many trees you want. It doesn't matter. It's yours. You can make your house a different size or maybe move your neighbors farther away. It's whatever. Whatever suits you. Whatever suits your soul. Set maybe. more branch than that. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of leaf structure for kind of like some deep background shot, but we'll be using a three-tone glaze for that, so I'm not going to have to get too too much too much going on in here. So let's put that. Put a little bit of this in uh, just to provide some later context. Yes, this is all still this burnt umber. We don't even have to have branches where leaves are. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. It'll be all right. some of this open because we want to have some places for the birds to fly through right so get and look at some of that sky it'd be a pretty sky I think Over here, just a little bit darker. Just a couple of 
those are a little bit closer. No, I don't think I'm putting leaves because these three branches that are coming down here are going to be more like dead branches than anything else. So let's just kind of don't mess with those. All right, I think that'll do for now. All right, guys. So real quick, we'll run back over this. But what we're going to be doing next time? So we'll glaze the sky in. Um, then we'll start glazing on the buildings. So in the buildings. There's a few things I put in this just to, you know, challenge myself. Uh, all these bricks for one thing, and all these little bitty tiny windows here and here and here. There's a door, an open door up here on the second floor uh, to do. In this building, which is also a brick building, you've also got like some yard space here and some stepping stone kind of thing. Steps, actually, just like you do over here. In this building, we've got an open roof. You can look through on two different sides, and if you look right here, this part, and look back here, you can see that this is a staircase going up to the loft. And then there's a broken wagon wheel in there as well. Um, and you got a building back behind that. You got this building sitting in front of that building right there. And then this building's back here. And then you got all these bricks and hinges and stuff. So um, we'll approach the sky and then we'll approach that building probably. And then this building and then this one, then this one. And then we'll do the foreground. And uh, then we'll probably finish the trees out last. Maybe. I don't know. We may throw them in there right after the sky, but I don't think so. Um, they're the darkest of all, everything that's going to be in this painting, so I think it might be better to wait and hold them off to the end. Anyway, we will be back shortly. Um, long enough for me to ice my shoulder, but hang on, I'll show you what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing this painting. So this painting is already finished and it's under painting. So we'll be coming back to glaze this. It's a great picture, little little fella with his camera. So a lot of challenging things to do in that. It's a relatively straightforward painting, but with some really kind of tricky things to go. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.